So you're the sign. Hello. Hi, guys. All right. Morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, obviously, we're here today to uh, <coughs> celebrate the great career of Chris Wondolowski uh, with the Earthquakes in Major League Soccer. Um, we also had a busy week this week. Um, you know, it's our general manager, Chris Leaf, yesterday, who's joining us here today to be part of this. But before we get fully started, uh, I want to go through some of Chris's accomplishments, which I think you have in front of you, but just to highlight some of the key ones and a couple of ones that I cherry picked that aren't on the list here for you guys. Uh, obviously, he's the all time leader in goal scored in MLS, 171 goals. He's 25 uh, goals ahead of the, 26 goals ahead of the, the next closest person. Um, 173 goals combined between playoffs and regular season. Um, all time leader in game winning goals at 46. 10 straight seasons with 10 goals or more. The only person to ever do that. MVP in 2012. Golden Boot winner in 2010 and 2012. 2011, I would say he should have won the Golden Boot. He tied with Dwayne De Rosario, who had seven PK goals that year. I think Chris only had Should have passed three. more, I guess. What's that? Should have passed more. Get, get the assists. That was the tiebreaker. I needed him. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, a five time MLS All Star. Um, and obviously played in the 2014 World Cup. Won the Gold Cup in 2013 with a uh, Golden Boot winner for the Gold Cup also. Couple of stats I thought were interesting that aren't on this list. In his whole career, he only missed three games due to injury throughout the entire career. Two in 20, 2009 and one in 2011. He broke his foot in 2011, missed one game and played the rest of the season with a broken foot, a special insert in his shoe. I thought that was a good, good note. Uh, additionally, in 2015, he twice played for the national team on a Saturday night and flew straight back and played for the Earthquakes the next day, um, once with a calf injury um, mm. and came straight into the team. So I guess mm. I'm saying he's an Ironman in MLS and really impressive uh, stats there. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris Leach, our general manager, who's here today to talk about Chris Wondolowski's accomplishments in his career. Uh, tomorrow we'll have availability for Chris Leach to talk about his new role as the Earthquakes general manager um, and, and answer any questions about that. But. I'll pass it over to Chris Leach now. Yep. Thanks, Chad. Yeah. Oh. Gotta pick it up. Sorry. Is that good? Thanks, Jed. Thanks for everyone for being here. Um, as Jed said, we're here to celebrate Chris Wondolowski's amazing 17 year career in Major League Soccer. Uh, 14 of those years as a member of the San Jose Earthquakes. I've been lucky to um, play against Chris. Well, unlucky to play against Chris. Uh, lucky to play with and alongside Chris uh, and also to be able to watch him from afar as he grew into a promising young player with a nose for the goal into uh, the greatest goal scorer of Major League Soccer history. Coached. I did do that, yeah. Coached. yeah. Um, it was a pleasure to see his career unfold and to see the dedication he had uh, in improving not only his game but all of his teammates around him. Uh, he's legendary for being the last guy off the training field. He never, never missed a training session. As Jed just said, he rarely missed a game. Um, and that was exemplified by Saturday's training session as well, his last training session. He's literally the last one on the field after the training session, heading into his last game of his career. If that doesn't tell you about Chris Wondolowski, I don't know what will. Um, not only was... Uh, he a great goal scorer, but he never stopped working. Um, he would score goals at one end and then routinely be be there defending, um, you know, whether it's a set piece or putting his defensive efforts in on the other side of, of the field. He always won fitness tests, um, even this year in his 17th season, which is a testament to his continued dedication. So, Chris, thank you for everything that you've given this club on the field. Um, you had an incredible run, and we're very uh, lucky to be along for that ride. Uh, although his playing career with the Quakes is over, we're proud to say that Chris will still be a part of the club going forward. Um, he's accepted his role, a role as the special assistant to the general manager. Uh, in this role, he will work in a number of different areas, including spending time working with the academy players and our young pros on our first team. Um, advising me in a number of different areas as well as we've uh, discussed here the last couple of days. 
uh, and he'll obviously spend some time um, in the community, you know, engagement sector as well. Um, he has, you know, as I say, 17 years of experience. So uh, we're going to learn from, from that knowledge and really happy that he's going to continue with this organization and continue to make a positive impact with our club. So thanks again, Chris, uh, for everything you've done in your career. Look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, congrats to uh, Chris for getting the general manager job. Uh, well deserved, and I think that it's one of the many reasons why we're heading the right direction uh, with this organization. And uh, proud to be a part of it. Proud to have it in my in my blood. And uh, thank you to Jared and Jed and Chris and uh, everyone to give me this opportunity to still still be involved and still be a part of this this club and organization because. It's, uh, it's a huge part of me, and I'm looking forward to helping in any way possible. Uh, you know, learning from Chris, who I think is one of the biggest and upcoming, uh, you know, in, in, his, in his job. And I think we were lucky to, to get him. And, you know, even just in our search, I think that we had uh, some great candidates. But, uh, you know, it, it was something that, that we need. And, I, again, I'm, I'm looking forward to what the future holds, especially with this club. I love the decisions and the the idea of where the future is going, and uh, that's something that is what excites me and why I still want to be a part of this club. And uh, again, it, it, it's a part of me, and so thank you for this opportunity, thank and uh, really looking forward to it. And again, too many people to thank, but thank you from the start. Uh, you know, I get I'm going to day back Jed. Uh, you know, in 2005, and uh, he was he was you know with. Jake and being able to, you know, was where Jake was and doing media relations and scooping ice creams at Root Beer Flow in the A's games. And, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's awesome to see how, how you've risen, how this club is uh, taken. And I'm, I'm excited to follow in these footsteps. And so uh, thank you guys. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. All right. So if you have a question, just uh, raise your hand and I'll, I'll call on you. Uh, Garrison, go ahead. What's your uh, earliest memory of attending an earthquake game or a flash game? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm, one of my earliest ones was it was a clash game, and they played the Colorado Rapids. And after I remember waiting at Spartan Stadium, and Troy Dyer came and he signed my hat, and it was a baseball like my baseball All Star hat, but. I still wore it every day, you know, and I needed Troy Dyack. Uh, he signed it for me, and that's that one just always sticks out, um, you know, him coming over and uh, taking the time to do that, and that's something that always was, uh, you know, so impressionable to me that I always wanted to try to give back as well, and if I could uh, affect one one fan as well, that, that they the impact that, that it had on me, uh, you know, I think I did my job, and that was something that I always remember. Robert Jonas. Uh, thank you. And Chris, thank you very much throughout the years. You've always been very open with the media. You kept your time available uh, you know, countless times, even after those long training sessions, you're still willing to sit down and talk with us. Um, I want to talk about uh, Saturday or Sunday and, and uh oh. Sorry, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lights out. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Next. <laughs> I arrived early because I was I was watching you all all pregame the interactions you were having with your family with your teammates you know but there was never that official announcement really until obviously the end of the game when did you definitively know yes I'm going to retire I'm going to make that announcement and how did that sort of emotionally affect you from that moment moving forward especially throughout the rest of the day uh, good one I mean it's still emotionally you know getting getting uh, wrapped around it and uh, I think it's really going to hit me uh, when preseason starts uh, and guys go back like right now it's the end of the season it's it's always sad when the season ends and you know you have your melancholy and you always feel that and I think I feel that right now but when guys go back to preseason I think that's when it's really going to sink in um, it was a bit of a fast movie like I always knew the retirement was there it always was that elf in the room it was Something that was on my mind, you know, even throughout even last year or two. Um, and so always wondered, you know, trying to make sure I could fit in and make sure I can help the team in any way possible. And I think it 
was just kind of come to that realization that it's kind of random score. Like, this is a great time, clean cut. Uh, you know, I think that I gave everything I could, and, um, you know, I think that was it. I think it was time to uh, have this opportunity to move on. I was very lucky, and I talked to Chris um, before the Salt Lake game, and even then it was still uh, mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily – I was leaning there. I was, uh, you know, I, he was – yeah, he was trying to push me back a little bit the other way, which I still appreciate and uh, love him for that. But, uh yeah, it, it probably about three or four days before, and then the day of the game, I was a mess. Like two hours before, walk in the locker room, the warm ups, I was a complete mess. Whistle blew, it was awesome. It just back to normal. The goal was uh, cherry on top. It that definitely just kind of relaxed me then, and then I just got to enjoy the game. Uh, definitely wish we got a win, but again, it was it, I couldn't have written it better. Um, you know, something that. Very grateful again to have my family there. It was it was pretty cool. I had almost like a hundred people, a hundred tickets I got to give to everyone, and so yeah, like I said, I had Chico High School, De La Salle, Mustang, and it was it was fun. Thank you. No, and that's the uh, one thing. I mean, I I love everything, everything that came about. You know, there, there were no regrets. Um, you know, people always wondered if I could, you know, like go to Europe. And, you know, you always wonder what ifs, but I, I'm grateful for the opportunities. I, I saw what happened. I see where, you know, some of the people who were in the same boat, you know, and they, they made that, that decision. But I, I got to play for my hometown. I got to raise my kids here. It, it no regrets at all, and uh, I love that. What did it mean to you to be able to have this last season with fans? Yeah, that, I mean, I think that definitely played a huge role, a huge role, especially last year coming back. Uh, even though I, I, last year I felt very good uh, physically, and especially where with the team is, and so uh, that, was, that was kind of a no-brainer, I guess, coming back. And this year, though, having the fans and being able to – to experience it with them, being able to celebrate it with them, uh, that that made it special, and that made it, uh, you know, kind of gave me some closure as well. You know, just uh, th- this is a great, uh, great ending for it. So, uh, congrats on the new job titles. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm sure you've had a chance to start thinking about that as well, and as someone who's got such a unique perspective on this club for so now that you're stepping to to the side, you're going to be you know, a fan of, of the team, a fan of the players on the field. What are what are some of the ways that you hope that you can contribute, say, directly to the team's success? Uh, you have such an amazing uh, kind of background and, and experience in how you grew to the level you are today. You know, how much do you see yourself stepping in and trying to help players, the young veteran? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, something that I really want to help with and kind of be. That, that bridge, that middleman between the locker room and front office and being able to, you know, understand where they're coming from and where the locker room's heart or mind is at, at, at a given time. Um, you know, and I think that's something that I have really found interesting and something that I think that I can uh, be valuable as I was identifying and also helping, especially the young, uh, young individuals, especially on the first team or even academy. But, uh, you know, you look at a kid and I, I think he is amazing on an amazing path and I can't wait to continue to work with him and other things. But we, we have a lot of great young, young individuals and, uh, you know, that haven't quite gotten the same, um, you know, minutes as Cade. And so we, we have, uh, you know, even Benji Konovich, but uh, Gilbert and um, Jacob and Casey, Casey Wallace, who just got called into the U-20s. And so sometimes you forget that these young guys are still on the right path, you know, and Casey and Cade sometimes overshadow some of them because he's an absolute phenom. Eh? You know, he's, he's phenomenal and unbelievable and is rightfully getting the praise. But uh, there's many others that I hope to help continue to work with, whether it's video. And there's so many great tools uh, that you're able to utilize in uh, every now every game you, you get your touches and so you have 25 touches in a game and you have the video of it and something I want to work with is not 
diagnosing or being able to distinguish, oh, you messed up on this pass. Oh, this guy's open. What I want to talk about them is, look, if you op- the way you opened up and drew this defender, it opens up space. This guy now opens a- is able to make a run or it opens up a passing angle just by you moving this way. And so these are the, some of the things that I would love to continue to work with. And it's, it's so difficult for a first team and especially a staff because you, you have to concentrate on your first 11 and because you need to win. You need the results on the weekend and especially when it's coming day in, day out and especially this year where it was Saturday, Wednesday, so many times um, playing uh, multiple games a week. It's hard. Sometimes those guys get left in, in the cracks a little bit, you know, and get overlooked. And so that's something that I really want to help be able to foster a uh, great culture in that locker room and something that – uh, you know, be able to be have a honest dialogue throughout, and you know, them to be open and same as well. And but uh, that's one of the many kind of different hats uh, I'm looking forward to wear. Chris, what do you think you're gonna miss the most about being a major league soccer player? Oh, um, again, it sounds so cliche and so dumb, but like practices, going into the locker room, uh, that the the banter, the jokes. Um, now I just get a joke with this guy, so you know it's a, it's a, I still love it, but it's uh, the, those are the the things that I definitely gonna miss. Scoring, scoring's good. I, I like that. That was that was all right. I like that. That's always fun. And I'm gonna go, Jake. I think you have a question from down line. Yeah, this question comes from Charlie Ball, who is with us virtually. Um, did you seriously consider going another year? Because from the outside, it seems that your skill set is still working and could mm-hmm. continue to be effective. Uh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I did. Uh, you know, I think that I I would be lying if I didn't say I looked at every uh, possibility to try to continue to play. I still have that love and passion. I, you know, but even this year, I felt amazing. I missed very, I don't think I missed much, any time, but, um, you know, e- each day it, it started to wear, you know, like, it, and again, it's not, oh, I'm just sore in my hamstrings. It's, it's weird thing. It's like my toes now, my my feet, my ankles. Uh, you know, those are getting so sore. And I, you know, getting out of bed. Uh, you know, that was uh, the thing. And I I could still do it, but you know, I, th- I think they're going to be going to three subs next year. There's just so many other things that I, I think that this is this was the right time. And again, I think that the way it's all working out, um, no regrets. And so that was yeah, kind of the thoughts. Burn. I'll ask you this on camera, so I'll just give it to you uh, now. First of all. It's a shock to see you in regular street. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen you. I've never seen you in I uh, I was joking. I actually told Chris. I was like, I have to go clothes shopping. I, you know, I had to drag this out. I was, this is deep in the in the closet. I'm used to shorts and a t-shirt. You know, that's a uh, this is big time dress up. You know, yeah. jeans and a and a well, button down for me. Well, here's one for you. Given <laughs> day, you, Carly Lloyd. I know. Buster Posey. Mm. Yeah. All giving it up while you still got some game. <laughs> It may be a while before you can really, really answer this, but how hard do you think it's going to be to just let go? Oh, I I don't think I can or will. Uh, you know, it's it's part of me, and uh, I think that's also what makes a sporting fan part of it is that everyone on the couch is, oh, I, I can do that, and I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be... 70 years old be like, oh, I should have scored that I, I could I could be out there right now I could uh you know I could be right around I'd be just put me just give me a cross and uh, that's all I need and so it's it's one of those you always believe you can um you know especially when I'm telling my daughters and uh you know and, and my kids uh my, my stories will always be much greater and uh, I think I, I can do so much better but uh I, I I did enjoy it and so I, I think it will be always tough to let go and even that competitiveness I go to my daughter's games and I'm just takes everything I can not to be screaming and not to be, you know, I, I'm so nervous. I'm more nervous there on the sidelines and a one-to-one, you know, battle for, yeah, it, it just uh, more nerve wracking there than uh, sometimes out there on the field where I feel I have control over that, not over there. So uh, hard to let it go. Oh, uh, favorite moment. I, I'm going to go just kind of embodies a lot of things is a 2010 uh, goal against the New York Red Bulls in the playoffs in New York. Uh, you know, it, 
we, we were over in the East, uh, you know, the bottom seed, but we knock out the top seed. Hey, guys, Thierry Henry, uh, you know, Limpe, like big big names over there that uh, were able to knock off and then to score that goal. Uh, Lexi Lawless, you know, thought it was just going to be a flash in a pan, you know, at halftime. And so that was one of those things I was just kind of – solidify or you know in my mind you know just uh all right I I, I can do it at this stage and um you know because I was kind of the breakout year and you always wonder a question and uh that's something that always will stick with me and that's why I think embodies so much <clears throat> if I'm not wrong you were playing right midfield in that time? yeah yes I was right midfield and so we we had a pretty interesting we had like Scott Sealy playing uh center midfield we um yeah we it was it, <laughs> Eduardo got Eduardo. Sure they, they score for any thank you, thanks. Yeah, Jason Hernandez and I have a yeah funny. 171 goals, uh, you know, by far the, the record in MLS, and, and potentially a record that may last a long, long time, given the way this league has grown. And, you know, good players tend to to move around and sometimes move on. You know, what does that record mean to you? And, and I know you've also got the 10 straight seasons, 10 straight <laughs> goals, which I was going to also compare or ask how they those two records. Do you see that record ever being challenged uh, the way uh, MLS is going? I do. Um, you know, I think that it's uh, MLS is still a young league and it's growing, and the the talent that they're getting over here, and uh, I think that it, it'll it's going to be eventually. Um, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, Joseph Martinez. Uh, you know, someone of that caliber. And so, you mentioned what it means to me. It 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 means a lot because. For me, just selfishly, I get to be mentioned with Landon Donovan or, you know, if Joseph, I feel bad for Joseph Martinez because if he does pass me, he's passing Chris Wondolowski, you know, it's like, oh, well, it sucks for him. But uh, it's cool for me that I get him passing me. You know, it's one of those where uh, just to be mentioned with uh, some of those names, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and that's why it means uh, I think the 10 plus and 10 seasons, though, means even or means a little bit more just because I think. Ten, like, I, I remember thinking if I had 10 seasons together just to play, it would be the world, let alone 10 goals. And so that one, mm -hmm. that one meant, yeah. Right. Any more questions? Yeah. Wanda, you're always very thankful <coughs> at the games with your teammates and coaches. Um, who, who do you want to thank today? Oh, so, yeah, exactly. I... It, it all starts with, with teammates. Um, you know, I wouldn't have had these 171 goals. I'm not a guy like Chofis who could, you know, dribble guys from half, you know, off the kickoff and take take on the team. I, I, that's that's not me. I need the guys to cross the ball. I need the team play. I need the movement. Uh, even the last goal, you know, what a great, you know, Cade feeds Marcos through and cuts it back. And then the unselfish play by Jabo to leave it, he could easily – uh, stepped in, tried taking the shot. Also, the agility to move out of the way. If that was me, that probably would just gotten right off the backside of me. And so uh, I appreciate his, his agility to get out of the way as well. But uh, many of the teammates, um, I, I do, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank Dom Kinnear for drafting me. Um, you know, that definitely learned a lot from him. Uh, then Frank Yallop and John Doyle bringing uh, trade in for me uh, to come back to, to my hometown and uh, play for the Earthquakes again. Uh, so thankful for them. Uh, you know, Matias for today still giving me the opportunity. And now, and then especially, you know, Chris, uh, Chris, Jed, Jared, uh, you know, pay ev everyone here in this organization because uh, they, they've been here for me uh, from the start. Uh, it's been, it's, you know, we've, get to yell at Jed in the parking lots. And, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> well, wasn't just a one-time occasion as well. And so it's uh, one of these things where, you know, it's, it's family, you know, it, it's brothers. It's, uh, you know, family that we get to express how we feel. And I, uh, I've always worn my emotions on my sleeves and uh, sleeve, and it's uh, grateful that I get to experience it here and uh, wouldn't have it any other place. Again, this is, this is home and it's, uh, Get to have friends and family here, but I'm uh, I'm very thankful for the coaching staff and the organization and all the coaching staff and especially the, actually the the assistant coaches. I need to give a lot of thanks for because they're the ones who spend probably the most time with and probably uh, need some hip replacement or uh, knee replacements. Like Ian Russell's probably served so many balls. Steve Ralston, John Spencer, just 
the, the amount of time they've worked with me uh, through the years wouldn't have been able to do without them. Uh, Turco, uh, Omar, um, the amount of, he, amount of work he does behind the scenes, it's, it's unreal. And uh, it's, those are the people in this organization that keep it running. And uh, that's also what makes this organization special. It's uh, a lot of those people, and they're the ones that are usually the most humble and work the hardest. And so don't get the credit. And I'm missing uh, many of the names right now of who should get the credit. And uh apologize, but, uh, yeah, thank you. Of course, one more question. question. How would you like to be remembered? Oh, um, you know, I want to be remembered as, as a good teammate, um, first and foremost, and then com a competitor, someone uh, who gave it, played the game the right way uh, every day, uh, brought it, and yeah, be remembered like that. Great. Um, well, Chris will be available with some one-on-one -on -one interviews afterwards if, if needed or requested. Um, also, tomorrow... We will be making Chris Leach available to talk about the general manager role in a bit more detail, and now we can go for it. And now we'll take a couple pictures here. Do you have the ball from Sunday for goal number 171? Oh, cool. Yeah, I've been in our possession. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to move this. Take a picture. You got to be pictures. Yeah, you know. I'm going to take a picture. Solo pictures. Yeah, I'm going to take a picture. Right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>